Hi, my name is Spiro Christopoulos and I'm the school captain here at Trinity Grammar School in 2020. Today I'm joined by former school vice captain and captain of rugby. He's from the class of 2009. Currently he plays rugby union professionally for the ACT Brumbies and the Australian Wallabies and he's no other than Mr Scott Seo. Good morning Scott, thanks for joining us, thanks for being here. Welcome back to the school. Now being back in uh, this gym this morning and on oval number one today, it must bring back some memories from your school days. So what's it like coming back now and seeing the school compared to when you started here back in 2006? Yeah, listen, uh, in 2006 uh, the gym was probably a quarter of the size of this gym so uh, we didn't have this great facility but it's, it's really uh, awesome to see uh, how far this school has come uh, in terms of that, in terms of uh, you know, really mixing sport with uh, education um, as well. So uh, it was quite nerve-wracking nerve um, joining such a prestigious school uh, back then. I'd, I'd gone to a lot of Catholic schools um, growing up, but um, nothing the size of this, uh, of Trinity Grammar. So uh, the students made it really easy for me um, to get used to day-to-day -day life here, and I'm um, really thankful for that. Now you obviously pulled on the green and white jersey for Trinity quite a few times during your career. You played in the first 15 for four consecutive seasons. What moments stand out for you uh, playing on the rugby field for Trinity? Um, I guess uh, I was fortunate enough to play first 15 for three years. Uh, I guess uh, you know, that first time you get to pull on the green and white uh, as a youngster, you know, a lot of the guys are quite older and um, you know, made it very easy for me. Back then I was playing in, in, in the back row and had our big tight head prop Joff looking after me. I think um, we played uh, St. Saint, Saint Wishes here. Uh, uh, Bernard Foley was actually the fly half uh, for them back then. Mm. We lost the game because he scored two tries, but they, I scored two tries that day too. So wow. um, I remember putting my hand up before I scored and Mr. Gibson was our coach back then. And um, he told me if I ever do that again before I score a try, he's going to pull me off the field. So, <laughs> you know, you put the ball down with two hands uh, every time after that. So, uh, no, a lot of, lot of fond mm. memories. And my first time running out as uh, rugby captain in 2009 was, um, was really, really special as well. And little did you know 10 years ago that you and Bernard would line up together uh, playing for your country. So it's definitely a great achievement for the CAS, having, you know, two Wallabies on the field at the same time here on number one over some years ago, so that's great. Yeah, no, unreal. So still a bit of a CAS versus GPS banter in, in the Wallabies team. Yeah. It's good to see that hasn't died. Very good. Now, as well as your memories playing rugby for the school, Trinity offer uh, a breadth of experiences off the field. And I know you had many of these opportunities through your leadership positions also at the school, as well as a couple of sessions with Mr. Ian Moore and his uh, famous Raw Challenge program. What were some of the highlights you had away from the rugby field during your time here at Trinity? Yeah, un unfortunately I only got through one session of Royal Challenge. I don't think I was fit enough to get, to get through another one, so, uh, you know, but thank you to Mr Moore for uh, uh, incorporating me in there. But uh, uh, I uh, had the opportunity to do cadets. I don't think it was uh, um, optional, but uh, I thoroughly actually enjoyed it in the end. Um, all the, all the camping and, uh, um, and setting things up, sleeping in a, in a sleeping bag and, and, and lugging it around. Um, I think it uh, teaches you a lot about discipline uh, mm -hmm. as well and gives you a small taste of what life is like for a lot of, uh, a lot of people that uh, sacrifice you know, their lives for our country as well. Um, had a lot of school fates. I got to go to four of them. They were, they were really fun. Mm -hmm. there was a, they had the big boxing gloves, which was a fun. Elias, yeah. Elias Moad was one of my good friends here at school, and he, he thought one day he'd take me on, uh, it, it, and it didn't end well for him. So uh, we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, there unless you go. he watches it. So uh, now a lot of fun memories. I had a lot of uh, opportunities to do a lot of different things here at the school. Into house challenges as well uh, were really fun. Out, unfortunately, our, our house week's house wasn't very strong in it, but uh, we did have fun, and we made sure we got amongst it. In terms of, from an academic point of view, what subjects did you enjoy when you were here at Trinity? Um, I was in year 12, I, I did a, a mixture of things, economics, business studies. Um, I uh, weirdly found modern history really fun. Uh, mm. I enjoyed it, uh, I guess learning about the different tactics of World War II was a lot of what we studied back then uh, mm. as well. Um, didn't do well with numbers, unfortunately. Still don't do well with numbers, but uh, my dad, said he'd always knew I'd be good at uh, English and business studies. 
because I can just keep writing about nothing for a long time, so uh, yeah. <laughs> not a lot has changed there. So, <laughs> so uh, mm. no, it was great, and uh, you know, obviously being you know, quite athletic, you you always enjoyed PE at a young yeah. age. It was something you thought you could bludge in back in school. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Well, very much like myself, I'm sort of more of a writing person as well. I'm not the best with numbers, but you know, you can write forever about anything. Yeah. So it's a, it's a good good skill to have. Having been part of the first 15 for three consecutive seasons in 10, 11 and 12 here at Trinity, you were obviously very focused on a rugby career after school. Away from the game, are there any examples of where the school challenged you to explore and expand your horizons beyond rugby? Yeah, I think um, like any professional sport, uh, you definitely can't play forever. Mm. And uh, within our realm of professional sport as well, you know, only the elite players get to play for 15 plus years, which in the span of life is is not a very long time to make the most of it. So uh, I think one of the, the great lessons um, that Trinity taught me is to always have more than just the plan B and plan C, plan D, I guess, making sure, uh, you know, you're, you're ready for anything, any situation. And uh, my father was very much in in the same thought process, which uh, helped them work in town together to make sure that I was very focused on uh, on my uh, academics here. Because at the end of the day, you're a student athlete, student first. Mm. So, um, you know, I understood that making you know the most of every experience here at school was going to help and benefit me moving forward. If you know my uh, pref preferred uh, career didn't work out for me uh, once I left, so um, yeah, I guess. One of the things, that's why I guess my dad encouraged me to do well in business studies, um, mm. you know, economics and English, because he thought um, you know, I might be good in sales, I guess, yeah. uh, one day. And it's, it's something that I, uh, I guess I'm looking forward to uh, in the next couple of years in terms of uh, you know, what life's going to be like post-rugby. Yeah, definitely. You know, a lot of valuable lessons you learn at school you use post-career anyway. So in the next few years, I'm sure we'll see some of that come, you know, come into good use. Now moving through to some of the lessons that you learnt from school and touching on leadership to begin with, you were both the vice captain of Trinity Grammar School and also captain of the first 15. What do you feel you learnt about leadership uh, through those years that have, has helped you in your career uh, in rugby? Yeah, I think um, being in those positions first um, made me realise the opportunity of, of representing something else rather than just my family. Mm. Um, you know, and, and that put me in good stead uh, moving forward, understanding that uh, you're now representing you know, more than just yourself. You're, you're, you're representing um, a lot of history, um, a group of, of people that uh, are supporting you. And um, it's no different uh, where I am now today. Uh, and I think being in this position, I'm very thankful to Trinity for giving me the opportunity to do that. Um, you know, help me realise the responsibility um, of that as well. And um, you know, it's a it's a different time in in your life. Obviously, uh, when you're coming up through through high school, you're sort of just cruising through, and you're just worrying about yourself. But uh, you know, now you have to um, sort of see the bigger picture when you you put in those roles and. You know, I understand that you're you're representing everything there is about Trinity, and uh, it's pretty exciting but nerve-wracking mm. at the same time. Having been part of two Rugby World Cups now, you've obviously been uh, quite a contributor to the team environment, also playing with the Brumbies. What did being part of the Trinity community teach you about being part of a team and contributing to a team and belonging in a team, I guess, as well? Yeah, I think um, I, I've never been part of the whole house mm. environment. Uh, sort of thing um, past primary school uh, so to come back here and uh, to come here sorry in 2006 and, and be a part of that uh, was was unreal link everything you, you sort of don't realize it back then um, but you realize it obviously now having been 10 years out of school you know uh, I know I don't look that old, but... Uh, you yeah. don't, yeah, definitely. You, you've <laughs> aged very well, Scott. Oh, say, thank yeah. you. I appreciate it too, kind. You know, it's why it's probably the school captain's got a way of words. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, you look back there, cadets, inter-house challenge, uh, school fates, inviting schools. Um, there's always a sense of camaraderie, uh, mm. friendship, um, teaching kids the ability to learn how to be friends and be a part of a community, be proud of your school community as well. And... Um, you know, there's always opportunities to represent your uh, community, whether that be in sport, academics, 
um, or any extracurricular activities uh, as well. So um, within all of them, you find, I guess, what your niche is and what you enjoy most. And uh, you get to do it with a lot of like-minded people uh, in the school environment. And uh, again, I can never say how thankful I am for the opportunity to come here. And um, you know, the school taught me a lot about the sense of friendship and belonging as well. Yeah, important factors, you know, post-school things and, and life skills that you really need to learn. So it's great that the school could help you in that capacity as well. Obviously playing 59 matches for the Wallabies, uh, including two World Cups, you've played rugby at the highest level for your country. And obviously you've come across quite a few challenges and obstacles during your career. What challenges and obstacles have you overcome and how has your Trinity education contributed to knowing how to face these challenges and overcome them? You know, I've, I've gone through a long list of injuries, mm. um, but I think the one injury I sort of look back at uh, was in 2014. Um, first day of Wallaby camp, I um, snapped my syndesmosis, my left ankle, so mm. I ended up getting surgery and was out for four months. Um, David Pocock was going through his second ACL reconstruction uh, and Stephen Moore I think had just done his ACL as well not too long ago. Uh, but I came back and I was um, very mopey and uh, I was very selfish in um, a lot of my feelings and um, I was kind of like why me and you know why has this come up. Uh, but uh, luckily for me I, I had those two there and especially um, Poe put things in perspective for me and said, look mate, you know, this is a team environment you've got to understand that the way you're feeling is going to have effect on the way other boys are going to react to, to it and how they're going to feel on a day-to-day -day basis and they can't be worrying about you when they need to be getting their preparation right. So, um, you know, you take that week that you need to get over this and you move forward because like anything in life, uh, it's an opportunity to improve somewhere else and um, better yourself so that, you know, when you come back you're um, ready to go and in the best best shape possible and best mental space possible for the, uh, for, for the team. And um, you know, looking back now, Trinity put a lot of those challenges in place in a lot of, um, you know, different things and um, I guess, you know, understanding that I didn't understand the importance of scheduling uh, back then, so you know, just being a young kid doing anything your parents tell you, mm -hmm. having first 15 training at, at 6:30 in the morning, mm -hmm. and then having to get ready to maybe do economics as your first subject, you know, like obviously your passions are quite um, are quite different. But uh, my parents always said that you know you need to be just as passionate about rugby as you are about school, mm -hmm. and it's going to put you in good stead moving forward. So. Uh, and there's always something that you're going to be uh, challenged with uh, moving forward, I guess just in life, not just mm. in, um, in your career. And uh, I believe as long as, just like Trinity and my family, as long as you've got the right support network around you, uh, you can always uh, move forward through anything. Yeah, for sure. And although it wasn't directly instilling the values um, through an injury at school, it was more juggling and balancing. And that's, you know, really important values to pick up on here as well and take through in different facets of your life when you leave Trinity. Do you have any advice for our students? Obviously you train with quite a few of them this morning with the Premier Squad for the first 15 in how to cope with setbacks that they may face along their, their journeys both physically and mentally. I know that back in 2015 before the semi-final against Argentina you had a bit of an elbow injury and that was hard to overcome but what advice do you have from a mental and physical point of view for our boys overcoming these injuries? Yeah physically uh, I dislocated my elbow in that quarter final and played with a dislocated elbow in the final. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't advise any students to do that here for the school. Yeah. Uh, that's a bit of a, a, a bit of a different one. But I mm -hmm. I think the biggest piece of advice I can give there is not to do it alone. Uh, I think support is is massive and I think especially for young men um, who think they've got to battle through it alone and on their own just because it's you know it's an ego thing is it's not the right way to go about it, um, you know, you, for a lot of us here, um, you know, we've got families who love us, and um, you got teachers and, and and staff and and other students here who who want to help and you know who are quite fond of you. So uh, I think uh, making sure you surround yourself with the right people um, and and the right energy, 
I think energy is massive. Having a lot of positivity around you is is super important. And um, you know that will be that's the first step I think towards building a plan um, to help yourself. I think um, you know planning everything, especially when you have a physical injury, you mm -hmm. sort of. Uh, I sort of wait to see what's told, but if you make a plan for yourself, you know, when you're going to be back and you plan your, your day to day and your week to week, it helps you achieve your goal a lot quicker than you think. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think those are the, the two biggest things is, you know, surround yourself with, with good energy and, and positive people and, um, you know, plan ahead. Yeah, for sure. And it's great advice, not just for our rugby boys, but you know, a lot of our guys tend to pick up injuries along the way, playing at a higher level, whether it be track and field and swimming and football. So some great advice there for our, our young Trinitarians. Growing to adulthood's not an easy journey as well, Scott. And uh, can you give us a little bit of a personal example of where Trinity has been there for you in that journey through adulthood, especially for guys like myself. I've been here for quite a long time. I'm, I'm interested to hear what Trinity has done to help you along that path uh, into adulthood. Yeah, I think Trinity has uh, been really great with, uh, with their alumni uh, program, always inviting us back to the school any chance uh, they get. Uh, I've got my 10 year reunion uh, this year, which will be, uh, it'll be interesting, I guess, to see how, how everyone has grown in, mm. into life and uh, what everyone is up to. Uh, these days, but um, those little things are, 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 pre are pretty special. It kind of makes you feel like that it wasn't just you spent your time here and that was it, and, and you're mm -hmm. done with the school. That there's always an opportunity to be part of um, you know, the future of the school and, and maybe come back and help in, in any little little way as well. And I guess personally, uh, for myself, uh, when I first made the Brumbies and, and the Wallabies, Trinity sent me a note of of well wishes uh, in the ma in the mail and. You know, again, I can never say it enough, but we're very mm. thankful to the school mm. Mm. Uh, to do that, you know, to, to realise that they're always looking out for um, students who have, who have moved on and, and are willing to help in any way that they can, whether that be through connections, you know, away from the school and uh, mm. in, in life and in the workforce and, um, you know, just, just supporting uh, each other. So, uh, yeah, really cool. Uh, Trinity has continued to do that. Um, throughout my, my career and uh, um, you know that's why I'm more than happy to come back here and uh, you know and, and meet everyone and, and see how everyone's going. Yeah for sure and I mean a nice gesture I recall back in 2015 I was in year seven and it was after the World Cup campaign and you uh, donated your uh, playing jersey from yeah. I think the game against Fiji to the school and they're the things that you remember and even as students looking up to you it's it's a, it's a great thing for us to aspire to be like you and not just from a sporting point of view but also from a personal you know, point of view growing into to adulthood. Finally, what's next for Scott Sayer? What's the plan on and off the field in terms of your rugby career? What's the, what's the plan and what's the plan for after that as well? Yeah, I got um, fortunate enough to sign another three years with uh, Brumbies and uh, Australian rugby. Mm. Um, so I get to apply my trade for another three years here in Australia yeah, yeah. and you know, hopefully um, play a, a lot more games for the Brumbies and, and if the opportunity to keep representing Australia comes up, you know, I, um, you know I'll be looking forward to that as well. But, um, you know, post-rugby, it's an it's a interesting time, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a, something you're not quite prepared for um, if you don't put the right measures in place, I think, while you're playing rugby. Um, Stephen Moore, next captain uh, you know, had, a, had a, a quote I think that resonated with a lot of diff, in a different way with a lot of different players that you know you always want to have something to retire to, not uh, retire from, and I think that's uh, very important. It uh, makes the transition a lot easier, and there's no lag time post rugby there. So um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'll go straight into something after it'll be a bit different, but uh, who knows? Uh, I know Snow is director of rugby now, but yeah. you know. Might come here after, you know, in the next, you know, five, six years, and maybe take the reins there, see how he's right. going. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, who knows? And see so, if there's a, a spot open for me here, at Trinity. We might see you with a clipboard in hand in a couple of years on the sidelines of yeah, Number yeah, One yeah. again. That'd be yeah. great. Get my Trinity hat on. That's it. Yeah. Well, Scott, thanks very much for joining us this morning. I certainly enjoyed the experience, just sitting down and having a chat and reflecting on your time at Trinity and how important the school was for you. I'm sure a lot of old boys and a lot of current students will get a lot out of this as well. So thanks very much for your time. Catch yeah. up with you later on. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. It's been really great. Thank you. Cheers.